Ladies and gentlemen, when President Trump, when I say that President Trump fights back, this is exactly what I mean. So today you have, okay, Trump. Okay, so former FBI lawyer Lisa Page, New York Post. Trump responds to Lisa Page. President Trump on Monday responded to former FBI lawyer Lisa Page, who claimed in an interview she feels crushed by his criticisms while defending her relationship and anti-Trump texts with an agent. Okay, then he writes... <laughs> And so when people say, like, this is the end of our democracy. Oh, the republic. Oh, the constitution. No, the FBI is part of the executive branch. That's number one. Number two, you had agents, part of an investigation into Clinton, who wanted Clinton to win. This is not rocket science. You had an investigation into Trump where the agents could not stand Trump. There is no delineation between personal bias, in this case, uh, personal sentiment, political views, and their work product or their ability to, um, to, to work in a neutral and unbiased manner. When people say, well, you can, you can, you can leave your politics aside, yet yeah, to a point, if, if you're investigating, if you had... Um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz investigating Trump. It, it, she's not going to put her politics aside, okay? You literally basically had Hillary Clinton investigating President Trump. That's exactly what took place. So at a certain point, you're not going to put your politics aside, okay? If you were, for example, hired to, um, to, to as a consultant for the Republican Party, but you don't like Republicans, but you're still hired as a consultant, a media consultant, or you're hired to um, set up events. Well, you're going to do a great job setting up uh, an event. You're not going to, like, you know, you know, make sure that while the Republicans, you know, while a Republican politician speaks, you know, you have, like, you know, the Ramones playing in the background right during a certain portion of her uh, or his or her speech. You know what I mean. You're not going to try to, you know, undermine the event somehow. Somehow. So, um, or Judas Priest, whatever, whatever. Okay, you know what I mean. The point is, the point is, these were agents that were investigating Trump, where they literally said, we will stop Trump. Trump is loathsome. He needs to lose a million to, to zero. Um, he's a horrible human being, all of these things. And then they get into it. They say, well, you know, um, um, you know, we have to uh, make sure that uh, we act a certain way because Clinton is going to win. Then they say, uh, oh, well, I'll read you what Trump writes. When Lisa Page, the lover of Peter Strzok, talks about being crushed and how innocent she is, ask her to read Peter's insurance policy text to her, just in case Hillary loses. Also, why were lo lovers' text messages scrubbed after he left Mueller? Where are they, Lisa? The commander-in-chief tweeted from aboard Air Force One on his way to the NATO summit. So Page uh, opened up about the criticism she has received from, uh, tr from Trump in an interview published Sunday. It's in the Daily Beast. Okay, the Daily Beast is an extension of the Democratic Party. Um, they wrote a hit piece on me simply because when I was a Bernie supporter, I was the biggest Bernie supporter uh, in the, on the Internet, according to the Huffington Post, and the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. But if you're a Bernie supporter bad. If you're a Trump supporter, bad also. They basically, most of the media only likes you if you're in the middle, the, the liberal middle where you're voting for and, wor and working to elect Clinton. Anyway, um, so page 39 opened up about Chris. So it was like this, this, I mean, it's kind of hilarious too, because they're creating their own reality. They're creating their own reality. So, this person engaged, this, this person engaged in criminal activity with Peter Strzok. 
They did not ask how Clinton transferred, was able to accept or transfer top secret a special access program intelligence onto servers outside of the United States government. Clinton had stored, sent, and received top secret intelligence. How did it get there? How was she able to store it? How was she able to get it on her phone? How was she able to read it when she was not on a government network, when she was on a private network that she controlled? Imagine if Aldrich Ames and Robert Hansen had their own private servers with top-secret intelligence on them. Okay, that's the point. If Trump had a top had uh, uh, a servers that he was that only he controlled, and like Kushner and Ivanka, because I think it was only Chelsea Clinton, Uma Abedin, and Hillary had actual access to the entire servers or the the entire all the emails. Then she deleted 33,000 emails, half of her emails. Then we don't know, we haven't seen the top secret and special access program intelligence or the communication with President Obama when he communicated under a pseudonym. So this was the biggest cybersecurity debacle of all time. Did Lisa Page want to indict Clinton? Actually, she did. <laughs> so, if, if, so it was Peter Strzok, really, who, well, it was Peter Strzok and her, but Peter Strzok was the one, we'll stop Trump. He's the one who wrote, we'll stop Trump. Okay, that's evidence right there of intent, of intent to go after Trump and, and, and cover up Clinton. It's just because they hid, if, if this were a local police station, your local police station, and they got you on a crime you didn't commit, and there were text messages found during the trial that said, we'll stop you, the person watching right now. We will stop this person. This person's horrible. I can't stand them. We'll stop this person. That you would be exonerated. You'd be found not guilty. Because they would, that would be show that there was bias. Especially if the police officer said, we'll stop this person because of... Um, his background. Of course, the case would be thrown out. Okay. That type of bias, it's not like, oh, you didn't vote for Clinton, you have subliminal bias. That type of bias is actually the basis for intent to go after somebody. And, and that's what they're, that's what they've, the, the media has completely altered reality. They've created their own reality with Peter Strzok. Peter Strzok was the lead investigator where Clinton didn't get charged, but Trump was investigated for because of a dossier Clinton purchased. And Peter Strzok, you talk about the criminal activity, under his tutelage, at his behest, Kevin Kleinsmith falsified documents within the, um, for the FISA report. And then he's on... And then he has text messages with his lover. So, I mean, they're all stooping each other at the FBI. And then they ha they're all talking about how they can't stand and have contempt for Trump here. But Paige, who bashed Trump in text messages to her special agent boyfriend, Peter Strzok, told the Daily Beast she finally decided to speak out after the president acted out. Okay, so I'm not going to say the word, but, you know, honestly, his demeaning fake, whatever, I don't even really know what she was talking about, but was really the straw that broke the camel's back. Really, tell us more, because you wanted to indict Clinton. Apparently, it was Lisa Page and um, James Baker, two of the, the top FBI lawyer, who wanted to indict Clinton. So, but the, the, they were overruled. Why? Because Peter Strzok and James Comey and McCabe were never going to go after Clinton. So I didn't know this. Any other human being in Clinton's position would have received major, major indictments. Okay. When people say, well, she hasn't been indicted, huh? Well, did she commit crimes? The interesting thing is, the hilarious thing is Bernie Sanders supporters, like certain pundits who try to disparage me and saying, well, she didn't get indicted. Oh, you, you predicted she got indicted. Yeah. Did she commit crimes? That's how you know somebody just basically works for the Democratic Party. Did she, and that's how you know somebody really doesn't, didn't want Bernie to win and really doesn't. I'm a Trump supporter. I'm voting for President Trump, but he fights back. 
But the the funny thing is that Bernie Sanders supporters, it's almost like they're fighting the fighting the billionaire class with one hand tied behind their back. You know that you were going up against a criminal. Why didn't you bring it up? Why didn't the pundits, why didn't Bernie Sanders himself bring it up? Oh, because they didn't want to alienate the I'm with her crowd. The I'm with her crowd has more contempt for Bernie Sanders than they do for Trump. Well, for Trump, they respect they respect the fact that they don't that that he fights back. They can't stand Tulsi Gabbard, they can't stand Trump, they can't stand Jill Stein, but they respect all three in a certain way because they fight back. The I'm with her crowd does not respect Bernie. They know at the end of the day they can disparage Bernie and his supporters enough to where they all fall in line, including Bernie. How are you going to fight the 1% when you can't even say that Debbie Wasserman Schultz cheated you? How are you going to implement Medicare for All when Elizabeth Warren, (laughs) her plan is horrendous, and already kind of, um, you know, hurt that cause. And then you have the Washington Post, the New York Times, and Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton saying, now we're never going to implement Medicare for all, but we'll get close. So, and they don't even mean that. The point being that Bernie Sanders, this is his fight also. This is his fight also. But he doesn't see it that way because he doesn't want to really fight. He just wanted to represent a certain viewpoint and, you know, inject that into the national consciousness, and now it's been jettisoned, promptly jettisoned. And instead of simply fighting the way Trump does, he doesn't want to, because that would alienate him from the rest of the Democratic Party, but but the Democrats will never... President Obama the other day said if Bernie got close, he would intervene. That's a whole other story. I'm telling you, Peter, she's going to win. Trump said in the parrot imitation. Okay. Uh, Peter, oh, I love you so much. (laughs) So he goes after them. Uh, She just has to win now, she said in July. Uh, In text messages, uh, uh, Paige, uh, did Paige Trump, uh, Strzok referred to Trump as, okay, a whole bunch of really bad words. He wrote the prospect of a Trump presidency made him, quote, scared for our organization. He should have been, Peter Strzok should have been, um, this is 18 U.S. Code 371. This is the interesting thing. This is the, this is the statute that says you, if you defraud the United States government and utilize agencies for, um, for a purpose they're not meant to to be utilized, th- that's against the law. Even in the IG report, when they say, well, there's no systemic bias, there's no institutional bias regarding the Clinton emails, they did say that Peter Strzok might have presented some bias. Even the IG said that Peter Strzok himself might have presented some bias. And so he did break that law, especially we're finding out now that he falsified documents with Kevin Kleinsmith. Or, let's say, Kevin Kleinsmith falsified documents at his, at, perhaps at his behest. Because Kleinsmith was the agent, that the lawyer that worked underneath Peter Strzok. As did Lisa Page, but we don't have to get into that. So, so there, you have FBI agents who are stating we, we're, we're basically going to get Trump. They're actually stating that. The media then says, well, there's no evidence that they did anything wrong. But see, it's, it's kind of funny. It's hilarious. So you have like these, these hilarious fact checks. Trump's baseless accusation of a Mueller crime. So the text messages, when he talks about the scrub text messages, you know, things always just happen. It's just a bizarre. It, they always just happen. Mueller is not mentioned in the IG report. Um so, and we have, hold on. No data could be recovered from the iPhones because the special counsel's office reset the phones to factory setting after Page and Strzok turned them in. <laughs> oh, that's a coinky dink. How did that happen? You mean they just reset the iPhones? That's when, when Trump says that they're, they're, they're scrubbed. They're like, the, the, the fact check organization, like, they weren't scrubbed. 
You mean like with the cloth with Clinton? That which that didn't happen either. They said did, with Clinton. They said, "Did you bleach bit? Did you did you wipe the servers clean?" She said, "What with a cloth?" <laughs> and nobody followed it up. When Attorney General Loretta Lynch meets with Bill Clinton, they said, "Golf, Brexit, and grandchildren." And the New York po- New York Times is like, "Really? Okay." <laughs> They're like, "Anything you say." You know, the Washington Post or, or what was it CNN? When President Obama says, "I, I didn't know," uh, that my uh, my uh, Secretary of State had private servers. I found out when you found out. Then why did you write, why did you email her under a pseudonym? <laughs> oh, but that's fine. He, 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 with Democrats, they just have they live their lives with implausible deniability of a fantasy world. And then when Trump embellishes, they say without evidence. What happened to truth? They, they play this game. It's like this hilarious game. No data could be recovered from the iPhones because the special counsel's office reset the phones to factory setting after Page and Strzok turned them in, according to the report. Both FBI employees had the iPhones for less than two months, and they contributed uh, to. They continued to use their FBI-issued phones while working in the special counsel's office, the IG report said. And then a conservative web- website said the special counsel's office scrubbed the iPhones before giving it to the IG report. But there's no evidence in the IG report of wrongdoing. They had iPhones during the Mueller probe where they text message Lord knows what. And then they, and then just miraculously or coincidentally, gosh, everything happens. You know, you have all of these like Haley's Comet moments with, with, with these, the, the FBI agents. They just put the factory reset. Don't you know? I mean, they weren't scrubbing anything. But because they put the factory reset on the phones, apparently they can't get the, the, the text messages while Page and Strzok were on the Mueller team before they were kicked off for obvious bias. I mean, that's very plausible. There is nothing wrong there. So this type of thing falls under 18. This is the statute. When people are, well, they didn't do anything wrong. No, it's 18 U.S. Code 371. 18 U.S. Code. We're just finding out that Kevin Kleinsmith worked for Peter Strzok. I mean, the walls are closing in, and it's public record. The public record shows you had corrupt law enforcement officials who literally are texting each other and emailing each other intent to cover up Clinton's crimes, and which she did. She had top secret and special access program intelligence, and the fact they didn't find out how she acquired that is also a crime. You can't simply... You can't simply hide behind, um, well, we investigated his potential financial crimes, but we didn't uh, look at the bank account or uh, anything to do with financial matters. That's funny. But we did investigate. No, you didn't. In fact, you're covering it up. How do we know? Because you didn't investigate. The agents didn't investigate how Clinton, so Lisa Page, Strzok, Comey, Clapper, Brennan, they don't know, how they, oh, they, they probably know, but they don't they haven't explained how Clinton had servers running outside autonomous servers private outside the US government that were able to obtain and store and send and receive top secret intelligence from intranets joint worldwide intelligence communication system other intranets that you cannot penetrate within the US government you can't just upload top secret intel to Facebook <laughs> which is exactly what they did with Clinton. They basically did the equivalent of uploading top secret intel to, to like, you know, social media sites. Instead of uploading it there, they just uploaded or sent it to Clinton's servers. That's illegal. That's a cybersecurity issue. I explain in my book about her top secret emails and but her deleted emails. That's on, they're on Amazon. What I'm saying is public record. James Comey pretty much alluded to this. But you have a whole bunch of people. A whole bunch of people. Michael Hayden also 
not kind of more than alluded to it, and he also stated that he would lose respect for foreign intelligence agencies. So, the statute is the 18 U.S. Code 371. And Comey, Clapper, Brennan, they, they all, they're all part of this. They literally investigated Trump based on a dossier and based on Alexander Downer's gossip, a dossier purchased by Clinton. Nonsense. If the tables were turned, they would never allow an investigation to Clinton from a dossier purchased by Trump or gossip from somebody associated with Trump. And Downer was associated with the Clinton Foundation. On the other hand, Clinton actually committed crimes. They didn't have to fabricate anything. And for whatever reason, James Comey said, well, no reasonable prosecutor would indict. Meanwhile, they've gone after everyone for process crimes. And that's unreasonable. Because the whole, the whole reason that, that they accused Trump of working with Russia and alongside Papadopoulos and Flynn and everything, they were not reasonable to any of these people. They were unreasonable. Flynn had nothing to do with any... I wrote in The, Huff, in, in the Federalist, Michael Flynn should be pardoned. They were, there was no Russian collusion. And then like a whole bunch of people on the left on, on Twitter were like, oh, you see what H.I. Goodman was writing? It's like, why? He has no, there, there was nothing... Flynn, Michael Flynn has nothing to do with Russia collusion because there was no collusion with Russia. There was no collusion with Russia. Give me your thoughts below. Check out H.A. Goodman's other channel right now. I'm going to be doing three segments a day on that channel. It's awesome. I get to talk about, you know, um, both Bidens um, in, a, in an unfiltered manner I can't, that, I, that I don't do on this channel. Give me your thoughts. Thank you so very much.